Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you a bit more complex way of controlling a stepper motor and uh, reading the position of the shaft. So if you have seen my previous videos, I have recently posted some uh, topics or videos related to encoders and pulse generators. And now I combine those things into one, let's say, bigger uh, system. So what we do here is that we give some kind of pulses with this uh, CNC wheel uh, to the microcontroller and that will translate the signals into steps which will be done by the stepper motor. And then uh, the number of steps which is sent to the stepper motor is displayed on this tiny uh, OLED display. And also there is a magnetic encoder on the back side of this uh, stepper motor which gives us a very precise position uh, or position information uh, of the shaft. So I already demonstrated this encoder and you can see the video in the corner so please check that link and you can see how it works but uh, I can very quickly explain it. So this encoder has 100 uh, different positions. So one turn will result in 100 pulses on the output of this uh, encoder. It has an A and a B output, and then a 0, V and VCC input. Uh, VCC is the plus 5 volt input, and the 0, V is the GND. And uh, the most important thing that you have to know about the A and B signals is that if you read the A signal and the B signal with an oscilloscope, you will see two uh, square waves shifted apart from each other and uh, the shift or the direction of the shifting uh, depends on the direction of the rotation. So if you turn this thing uh, clockwise direction, then the A uh, pulse or the square wave will show up uh, earlier and then the B starts to go high around the middle of the A uh, square wave and if you do the other way around so you turn this thing counterclockwise then the B pulse uh, arrives first and then after roughly half uh, wave the A pulse also goes high and then uh, you can distinguish these two uh, signals or two directions from each other by just looking at the occurrence of these signals. But uh, once again, check that video because I talk about this m in more details and I explain you all the coding and everything. But then uh, this is just one part. And then we have another encoder, which is on the back side of this. I don't want to disassemble this, but I show you what is there. So there is a small plastic bracket, which I printed and this accommodates a small uh, magnetic encoder which is an AS5600 magnetic encoder and it can be used with I2C uh, protocol so it's very nice to communicate with it because it's just so simple. So then uh, this magnetic encoder is inside this plastic thing it's uh, screwed on the plastic thing uh, this plastic holder and then it's uh, fixed on the back side of this body of the stepper motor. And then the shaft contains a tiny, tiny uh, magnet, which you can see here. And the special thing about this magnet is that instead of having the poles on the top and the bottom of this uh, cylinder, it is on its sides. So it's a so-called uh, magnet, which is diametrically uh, magnetized. And this is very good because if you start to rotate it, then uh, the magnetic field or the change of the magnetic field uh, can be captured with this chip which in fact contains four hole sensors in a square arrangement and then uh, as you rotate the magnet over this sensor you can pick up the changes of the magnetic field and you can translate that into an angular deviation and that's how you get the uh, location or the position of the of the shaft when it is being rotated. So this is uh, uh, the main, or these are the two main parts. 
So we have the magnetic encoder and we have uh, the CNC wheel. So this gives the signal to move the stepper motor and then this guy gives the feedback to the Arduino or in this case STM32 blue pill and we can see uh, how everything works. And of course I'm using a breakout board and the stepper motor here. This is a very uh, nice uh, breakout board because it makes everything more cozy, more uh, easy to use. And this is a DRV8825 stepper motor driver. It uh, works very simple. Uh, you have to check the video in the corner. I introduced this many times and there is also a video about uh, this uh, thing. So I think I mostly summarized all these things. So I just start up the system and then we can see what happens uh, here. So the power supply for the stepper motor driver is already connected. It's just a simple 12 volt uh, power supply. And then the power supply for the Arduino will come through a USB cable. So let's just connect this. And you can see the welcome message here. And this will not change as long as I don't do a click on this. So what I want to show you here is the precision of this thing and uh, just I just want to give you some guidelines or ideas how you can use this system together. So what I have here is that the stepper motor driver is set into full step uh, stepping, which means that uh, the stepper motor, this specific one, will do one full rotation uh, with 200 steps. So to do 360 uh, degrees angle or to return to this position, uh, there has to be 200 steps to be done. And uh, therefore I have to send out 200 clicks from this wheel so what we display on this uh, display is that there will be a line which starts with W and that is the number of pulses from the wheel. And then there will be a line starts with M, which is the feedback from the magnet. So that's why it is M. So for example, if I do two full rotations on this wheel, Remember, this has 100 pulses per rotation. So if I do two full rotations, then uh, I should end up with 200 pulses and that should uh, rotate this shaft by one full turn. So let's see if this is the truth. So I start to move it. And uh, let's check first of all after 100 uh, clicks. So this was 100 clicks registered by the uh, Arduino or the microcontroller. And you see that now this is pointing downwards. So roughly 180 degrees is done. And this is also showing almost 180 degrees, 177.54 degrees. And uh, one thing which I haven't really figured out yet uh, that this thing has a scale as you can see and also there is a small notch here so you can see where you are located at uh, at a certain position so in fact when you do a full rotation and you start from zero or whatever position and you return to that position by doing a full turn uh, that should give 100 pulses but sometimes I don't get it so uh, I don't know what's wrong, maybe I'm not uh, using the code properly or something is wrong with the wiring, but uh, sometimes I cannot match the scale uh, with the number of pulses registered by the microcontroller, but uh, it's not a big deal for me. So I just want something which I can rotate and then uh, it's more important to have a perfect positioning on the stepper motor. So we are at 100 uh, turns or 100 pulses and roughly halfway. So let's finish and go to 200 and see if we are at uh, 360 as we would expect. So I just keep rotating this thing. And almost. So this is 200 here. 
and this is 359.91 and uh, if you checked my video where I was talking about this magnetic sensor you know that the angular resolution of this thing is 0 0.0898 something and that is actually the missing uh, part uh, from the 360 so in fact we are just uh, in the one bit inaccuracy of the numbers which is for me quite okay but uh, you can see that it doesn't do too much mistake and then uh, let's continue this and I do two more turns which should bring the W to 400 and the M to 720 so two turns is done 400 uh, pulses from the wheel and this is at almost 720 so what I will do now I disconnect this thing and uh, just to reset the numbers and I change the micro stepping and I know that if I set uh, the middle one so the second jumper or dip switch to high that will be 800 uh, steps per turn so if I start this thing again and I do 800 pulses with this wheel or I create 800 pulses then this should do a full turn so let's see so I just stop halfway and you can see that this is roughly halfway and this is also almost halfway and you can see that we almost went back to 360 and we have the 800 uh, steps done and uh, just for fun I can change this again and now we are at 1600 micro stepping and I did that or set that up by uh, setting the MS1 and MS2 to high and keeping the MS3 at uh, low uh, settings so if I go from 800 to 2400 then uh, this should go another uh, turn so you can see that this is at 2400 so we added 1600 to the 800 and we did one full rotation which is another 360 degrees and this is exactly at 720 so you can see that sometimes these errors can compensate each other especially if you rotate this uh, several times so of course maybe it's not precise within one turn uh, or not exact at one turn because it's still quite precise uh, but if you do several turns then you can end up uh, at the perfect uh, number and I guess that also has something to do with the with the micro stepping so if you have smoother steps then you also have less error in the uh, positioning of the shaft and by the error now I'm referring to the let's say misalignments in, inside the motor and so on and so on so maybe it's not perfectly aligned or or something so now I go back to 200 steps uh, per turn by setting everything to low and I just do uh, two more turns on this to give the 200 uh, uh, pauses so this should be 2600 and then this should be 1080 so let's see what happens so 2600 and 180 you can see that the last digit here is jumping that's again just uh, some digital noise can come from the conversion or whatever but uh, you can see that this is more or less precise the only problem is as I mentioned that uh, sometimes the number of pulses which uh, appear here is not perfectly aligned with the scale so maybe if I do like 10 turns uh, then that will be let's say I return here to the zero position but uh, this will show instead of uh, 10 times 100 so 1000 it will show 998 or 1004 or something like that 
But here you can see, I try to rotate a lot. And here is a trick or something which I want to explain you before I will explain uh, the code. Uh, so you could see that if I rotate this too quickly, uh, the motor here, the M line, is not really catching up with the um, position of this. So now we are at 3185. And if I start to rotate this very quickly, uh, this is not really changing as we want. And why? Uh, for that, I will go to the computer and tell you why uh, with some illustrations. So what comes now is I tell you about this kind of uh, flow or mistake. It's uh, on purpose. And I will also show you the code. But uh, for the code, I will do a sort of a speed run because I already showed the code for this thing and for this thing and for a more detailed uh, explanation you should always refer to those videos but uh, still I will show you the main um, key uh, points of those things but first of all I will talk about this uh, thing why it is uh, not working at high speeds as you can see so let's move to my computer and uh, I will show you all the things which are missing so before jumping to the source code and explaining the parts in the code I would like to tell you why the microcontroller was not able to catch up with the uh, rotation of the wheel. So this might be familiar to you from my uh, previous video where I introduced this magnetic encoder. And there uh, I showed this circle and I explained how I uh, try to detect the transition between different uh, quadrants and how I try to detect uh, the number of turns. So we have a circle and this is uh, one full turn and I divided it into four equal parts. So we have uh, the first portion or uh, first quadrant and the second one, third one and fourth one. And you can see the corresponding angles or uh, ranges of angles for the four different uh, portions. So when we are looking at the uh, detection of the turns, we do the following. Uh, then there is a transition between the first and the fourth uh, portion. Uh, we see which was the, what was the direction. And based on that, we decide whether there was a clockwise or counterclockwise uh, direction. And uh, this, this goes in the following way. So whenever uh, the shaft is rotating together with the magnet, then uh, the magnet goes through these uh, portions. And then uh, finally, let's say it arrives uh, somewhere here in the fourth uh, quadrant. And then uh, on the next uh, or at the next uh, time, when we check the position of the magnet, it will be in the first uh, quadrant. So it goes from here to here, let's say, and that is a, uh, let's call it four to one uh, transition. And this was a positive direction, and this was also a clockwise uh, direction. So if we uh, saw that the previous quadrant was the fourth one and the current quadrant was the uh, first one, then we know that uh, this direction was the clockwise direction and then we increase the number of turns by one. And uh, so this was this direction and if we did the other way around, so we started in the first one and we go to the fourth one, then that is, let's call it uh, one to four uh, transition and that was a negative direction and that's the counterclockwise direction. So if the previous position was somewhere in the first uh, portion and uh, now when we read it again it's in the fourth uh, portion we know that we were moving backwards or counterclockwise and therefore we have to like, decrease the number of uh, turns or uh, make it negative. Uh, so this is how we catch uh, these uh, transitions. But 
uh, I showed that the encoder was not able to uh, catch up with this. And uh, the question is, why? Well, this is pre-programmed, in fact, so I made it uh, like this. And uh, the simple reason is that because I was uh, running the VL quicker than uh, I set the sampling uh, of the of the positions, because what happens is that uh, we rotate this thing like uh, continuously. We rotate the magnet, uh, so when the stepper motor's shaft is rotating, then the position is always changing on this uh, sort of map. And then, in uh, equal time periods, we do a reading. So let's say. In the first uh, reading we are here on the circle, and then in the second one we are here, and then uh, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. So this is something like uh, like equal uh, time periods when we uh, sample the angles. And then we know that, uh, okay, we have two samples in the first portion, and then the second, third, and fourth. So. Uh, this works only up until a certain time period, but if the shaft or the magnet is rotating too fast, then you will see that, uh, for example, the first uh, sampling maybe will start in the in the second, the second uh, period, and then the second sampling will be here, and then uh, the third will be somewhere here, and then the fourth uh, will be here. So this means that uh, we have like. Uh, Two, two big jumps, so maybe some quadrants get uh, skipped or, or or something like this, so we cannot detect the uh, transitions or the number of turns uh, properly. And uh, what this suggests, uh, as you see that uh, some quadrants were skipped in the last example, then we have to increase the sampling frequency. And in fact I just adjusted it uh, to 60 RPM and uh, since the shaft was rotating with a higher speed, then it was not able to catch up uh, with the uh, with the speed of the shaft. Uh, I, I mean, the sampling was not able to catch up with the uh, rotation of the shaft. So, as I said, uh, the maximum RPM was uh, 60, as you can see it here. So this was the ma maximum. So this means uh, like 60 uh, rounds uh, or turns per minute. And I also define that I want to detect at least two points uh, per quadrant. So in total, um, I will have eight points within one uh, turn. And then it, I'm almost sure that I can catch uh, two uh, points within each uh, quadrant if I have uh, this kind of uh, strategy. So then, uh, Let's do some very simple calculation and then I show you how you can adjust your uh, numbers in the code to detect the uh, turns uh, properly. So we said that uh, now we don't expect higher speeds than 60 RPM. And then let's uh, convert this uh, to RPS, so rounds per second. And I chose this 60 on purpose. So if you do 60 turns per minute, there are 60 seconds in a minute as well, so this becomes one uh, round per second. So one turn uh, in a second. And then we also know... Uh, so, so, so what I did here is I just uh, divided the RPM value uh, by 60. So this uh, gives it in RPS. So this was uh, technically the step number one. And then uh, the step number two uh, is is here technically as well. So we got the RPS, and now we know that we want to have eight points, so two points per uh, quadrant. So what we do here is that we know that uh, one turn is one second. So we want to know uh, the time period which we have to start the new uh, reading for the position. So then you just divide uh, this number with the amount of points that you want to detect. So here what I just do is I just divide the 1 uh, by 8. And then uh, this is 
0 0.1 to 5 uh, and the unit is in seconds so this is 125 uh, milliseconds so what we do here is this answer tells us that we have to read uh, the position uh, of the magnet every 125 milliseconds in order to get 8 readings at 60 rpm so of course if you turn the shaft slower and slower you will get more readings uh, per quadrant but we want to find the ceiling of this the upper limit uh, where we can still get uh, the proper amount of uh, readings and uh, just to do another example so uh, to, to really show you how this works so we have uh, step number one and uh, we go to RPS uh, from RPM and then uh, for example we want to detect uh, 300 uh, RPM and then uh, we have to divide this by 60 right to, to convert it into turns or rotations uh, per second and then this will be 5, 5 RPS so then we know that we have 5 turns per second so we have to calculate the time uh, to have one turn so then uh, we have to divide uh, the one second by 5 uh, RPS so then we know that one turn will be of course one fifth of the second so 0 0.2 seconds or 200 milliseconds and then uh, we have to do the division so what we do here uh, is we said so this is determined by us that we want to have at least two points per quadrant so we have to uh, consider two times four because we have four quadrants uh, so eight points so we want to have eight points within a turn so we want to divide this 200 uh, milliseconds uh, by eight and then uh, this gives us uh, 25 uh, milliseconds so then uh, this means that if you want to have uh, 8 points per turn detected at 300 rpm uh, speed of the of the magnet then you have to read at least at every 25 milliseconds and why this reading uh, frequency is very important for us uh, will be revealed when I, I show you the code but now I hope that you at least understand this part so what I do now I just move to the Arduino code and I show you the most important things of the uh, source code so this is the source code of the software and this is basically the combination of the code that I have already introduced for the AS5600 uh, magnetic position encoder and uh, the CNC wheel so I will skip most of the parts in uh, what I mean is that I won't explain them in too much details but uh, where I made some more significant changes then uh, I will spend some time there but what we have is that we know that both the display and the magnetic encoder uses the I2C uh, protocol so we need the wire uh, library and also we need the library for the display and in fact uh, the encoder also has a library but uh, I wanted to code everything myself so I at least understand how it works and I have uh, more control over the things so here I, I'm not using the uh, library for that and then we have just a few uh, details for the display and I also have this OLED timer which is uh, the timer for the refresh of the display and uh, then here comes a bunch of uh, variables which are needed for the registration of the uh, turns, the angles, uh, the tearing of the angles and so on. If you are really curious about these uh, variables, read the comments and also check my other video where I uh, spent more time on this. 
then we have the encoder and I connected them to the PB10 and PB11 pins and here is a small description of the behavior of the uh, encoder wheel so you will see and we stored the number of clicks done by the wheel uh, in some variables so you can see those and of course our favorite uh, stepper motor controller library the access stepper library is also used uh, I have the PA9 as the step pin and the PA8 as the direction pin and I also have the enable pin uh, put on the PB12 uh, terminal and then we go into the setup here so A and B uh, are input uh, pins uh, these are the pins for the encoder and the pin A is actually an interrupt pin so whenever uh, that is changing and it has a rising edge so the square wave starts to go up to high uh, then we enter this uh, function and then uh, we have serial port just for troubleshooting I'm not using it when I run it on the uh, breadboard and then of course we start uh, the I squared C and first we are looking for the presence of the magnet uh, this blocks the code so if the magnet is not positioned uh, correctly then uh, the code stacks here until you uh, put the magnet close enough to the sensor and then we do a reading uh, for the position of the sensor so this makes sure uh, that we tear the value of the uh, angles so when you start up the device it will start from zero degrees because uh, you know or you should know from my previous video that uh, the magnet has predefined absolute positions over the uh, sensor so it's almost 100% sure that you don't align them at zero degrees when you start to assemble the sensor and the magnetic things. So this makes sure this part of code that the angle will be teared to zero and then you start counting from zero uh, degrees. And then some OLED uh, related uh, things. This is just uh, printing some vacuum message and so on. And then uh, I set up some uh, tiny details for the stepper motor as well. Uh, just uh, some tiny details but uh, nothing fancy and then I wait here a little bit just so the user can see the welcome message for a while and I start the timers here by saving the current time into the OLED timer and encoder timer uh, values so actually what I explained uh, in the uh, drawing is explained here and I will keep this here when I upload the code so you can see everything but uh, let's focus on the uh, code here so what we do here is we read the angle correct it so we tear it and then check which quadrant uh, we are located in uh, in order to know if we have to update the number of turns or not and uh, this is it and this is where you need to uh, change the timing uh, based on the RPM value, the maximum RPM value that you are going to uh, achieve with your stepper motor. This is now optimized for 60 RPM, so at 60 RPM you will get at least two points per quadrant and that's enough for, uh, it's enough to recognize the transitions. So you will be able to keep track of the number of turns. And of course if you have this uh, quick because this is already quick so if you have this quick uh, sampling of the positions and you turn the wheel or uh, turn the shaft very slowly then you will have more and more points uh, of course the slower you turn the more points you get and then that will be a very good uh, sampling and then uh, once these are done at every 125 milliseconds uh, we also refresh the display and we do the step if it's necessary and uh, actually why I do this it has a funny reason so in the wire library itself there are some interrupts and since the uh, CNC wheel also works with interrupts they somehow interfere with each other and uh, if I don't uh, 
put sort of a delay here. It's not a delay, but these functions are only called uh, with a certain uh, time period. So they are not called constantly when they can be called. Uh, since these things uh, interfere with the uh, interrupts of the encoder, then I get very funny numbers if I use the encoder and I try to update the angles as quick as possible. So I thought that it might help that I just update them when I really want to or need to update them. And this uh, seems to work very well. So here I don't explain this again because I have already explained this in my previous video. But what we will uh, do here in nutshell, we have to request two uh, bytes, so eight bits, uh, two times eight bits uh, from the different registers of the magnetic sensor. The information contained in those two uh, bytes have to be uh, summarized into a 16-bit or 2-byte uh, variable and also we have to do some shifting because uh, one of these uh, bytes do not contain all the useful data. So that's what is happening here and at the end we just uh, recalculate the uh, row value into uh, proper degree value. Then in this function we do nothing else, we just do this correction that I told you that we have to tear the value so when you start up the device you will get uh, your starting point at zero degrees and this is what happens here. And uh, we also have to check the quadrants so this is how you detect the uh, displacement of the shaft and you also detect the uh, turns and uh, the detection of the turns actually happen here so the two transitions are defined here what I told you so if the quadrant number right now is number one and the previous was four we had a four to one transition so that was a clockwise direction and we have to increase the number of turns and if we do the other way around so right now we are in the fourth quadrant and previously we were in the first. We went from one to four uh, quadrant. So that was a counterclockwise direction and then we have to decrease the number of turns. So in principle this will tell you the absolute position. Then here we check the presence of the magnet. I also explained this in the other video so I don't spend any time here but you read the register and based on the value of the register you can decide whether the magnet is close enough or not. That's technically the uh, meaning of this part. Then uh, we want to refresh the display and there are two conditions for it. So one is that we only refresh it at every 250 milliseconds because otherwise it can cause some flickering and something like that. But uh, there is another condition, or two more, but uh, combined into one, which is this. So we have to see if there was a change either in the total angle, so either the shaft was moved or uh, the CNC encoder was moved. So if those values changed, so this is here, uh, the function for it or the line for it. So if this, uh, if one of these happened, then we enter and yeah, we just do what we have to do. We print the magnet uh, uh, position and we also print the wheels uh, position. And, and that's all. And of course we have to uh, update the angle and also the number of clicks so we can look for the next uh, change. And uh, this was the previous one, uh, the previous condition. So if you don't like uh, this, then just comment it out or do something with it and just remove the comments in front of this line. And then you can only detect the uh, change on the wheel position. And finally, we enter the interrupt function. So as I said, the interrupt uh, is reading the pin A and it is looking for a rising edge. So when the square wave in the pin A output of the wheel is read by the microcontroller 
and there is a rising edge, then we enter this function. And then when we enter this function, we read the B uh, pin. And I showed uh, some nice pictures uh, from an oscilloscope, uh, which shows the actual output signal. And uh, by studying those signals, I could see how to write this code. But what happens here is that uh, if the pin B is zero, then we know that uh, the A uh, square wave came first, and that corresponds to a clockwise direction. So we increase the number of clicks uh, on the wheel. And if uh, it was the other way around, so the B is already high, uh, we know that the B came first and then the A uh, also started. So the B is high. And then that was a counterclockwise rotation. So we have to uh, decrease the number of clicks. And here I just printed it, but this is a very bad practice. Don't do this if you are not uh, debugging the system. I was just looking for the uh, values, whether they change correctly or not. But this has to be commented out, of course. And don't put any delays on interrupt in interrupts, because that will mess up everything. And finally, here, which is maybe also bad practice, but here uh, I update the uh, position for the uh, access tapper library. So what the move to function does is that it goes to the number of clicks uh, position and this is an absolute position. So if you set uh, the number of clicks as a high number like 4000, then the stepper motor will move to the 4000 uh, position. And why I put this minus one there is because while I was rotating the CNC encoder via clockwise direction, my stepper motor went counterclockwise and I just could not figure it out uh, what is wrong. I tried to modify the wiring and the code as well, but uh, they did not follow each other. But by putting the minus one here, everything was solved. So technically this is the code. And uh, the most important thing in this code is that you have to adjust this number, 125 uh, milliseconds, uh, to the maximum expected uh, RPM. And uh, you have to see that uh, calculation that I did like 10 minutes ago in the video, or you just look at this example where I calculated everything, and then uh, you will see how to calculate the uh, things. So if you have a higher RPM, then the delay will be, of course, lower. And if you have a lower RPM, uh, then this will be, of course, a longer time period. So for example, this is now optimized for 60 RPM. If you expect this uh, to be 15 RPM, so much slower, four times slower, then this becomes uh, four times longer. So this can be 500 milliseconds and, and so on. But uh, you can check uh, this part and you will understand everything. And I also checked uh, the time for these three functions and they take roughly 300 microseconds to finish. And I also checked this and this takes roughly 25 microseconds. So they don't really take up time but uh, they mess up with the interrupts whenever there is an I squared C thing. So this and also this. Uh, so, so be careful with those. So this was all the video and I hope that this was useful and you learned something. For further details, please uh, check the description of the video because uh, I put the, the link there for my website where you will find this source code, the schematics and some extra information, of course. Uh, you will find the products uh, if you want to buy these parts as well. So this was all. I hope you learned something. I hope you liked the video. If you have some questions, comments or critics, uh, please just leave a comment and uh, we can discuss it. And see you in the next video.